All right, folks, this is an introduction to using a continuous servo within Arduino. Now, you might remember a while back, we worked with a standard servo that looks like this. And a standard servo is designed to sweep back and forth from 0 to 180 degrees. They're great for steering a remote-controlled car, controlling con surfaces on a remote-controlled airplane, opening and closing doors in a model. However, the continuous servo, what it does is it spins. It's really a motor, so it can go forward or it can go backward, and it's pretty easy to control. So let's talk about how you set it up and how you program it. Here we go. So first thing in Tinkercad, we've got our standard servo. In Tinkercad, they call it a positional servo. And you'll notice when I click on it, there's a little drop down here. If I want to convert this to a continuous servo, I'm going to hit that drop down, change it to continuous. You'll know it worked because now your servo has a wheel. It's amazing. Uh, you can rotate your servo using the rotate button, and we'll do that right now. Now, this servo on the right has already been wired up, but let's break down the wiring part of this. So one of the things I love about Tinkercad is that you can hover over each part of the servo and see what connects to it. So the ground tells you it connects to ground. The power is going to connect to 5 volt and the signal will connect to the pin on the Arduino that has been programmed to control that servo. So let's check it out over here. I've got my signal wire going to pin 5. I have my power wire going to 5 volt on the breadboard. And you guessed it, I have ground going to my ground row. Okay, so... We hit start simulation, it spins one direction, it spins the other direction, it slows down, it does it all over again. How does this work? Let's jump into the code and take a look. Just like with any other servo, you have to do hashtag include servo.h. This is a library of commands that's specific to servos. The next line is defining the variable name for this servo. So servo with a capital S says, hey, Arduino, we're about to name this servo. I called it servo one. You could call it cat. You could call it banana. I'm gonna call it servo one. Okay, in the setup function, pretty straightforward, not much else happening here. It's simply saying that servo one is attached to pin five. And look at that, it is. That's it for the setup function we bounce into our loop. Now this is where things get different. You may remember with a standard servo, we would sweep the arm from zero to 180. Well, in this case, we're not sweeping, right? We're spinning continuously. But the way this works is if we say servo one dot right zero, it's going to go as fast as it can in one direction. We got a one second delay servo one dot right 180 is going to spin as fast as it can the other direction and of course we don't have to wildly spin this right i'm going to change the second one and i'm going to say instead of servo dot right zero which is as fast as it can go i'll say 50. watch how fast it spins now i'll hide the code hit start simulation it's not spinning as fast. A little hard to tell in Tinkercad, but trust me. So you can control the speed of the servo by changing this number. But you might be wondering, well, what does 90 do? Well, in the real world of a servo, not servo one dot right 90 is going to stop the continuous servo. So it won't be spinning at all. In a real life servo, we'd actually have to use a screwdriver and adjustment, and I'll show you that in real life. Tinkercad is weird, and I honestly don't know why, but you'll notice when I hit start simulation, that where it slows down a lot 
is it supposedly stopped? There's no way to adjust it. I don't know why Tinkercad is like this way, but it is. But that's really what's happening in our code is that we've got servo1.write50, move at a speed of, we'll call it 50 in one direction, wait one second, servo1.write180 is go as fast as you can in the other direction, wait one second, and then servo1.write90 should bring that servo to a stop. These are the basics of controlling a continuous servo. They are useful to create basic robots where you want to have two servos to make the robot go forward, backward, or turn. They can be used in all kinds of models for things like conveyor belts that are constantly moving, an elevator that moves, goes up, and then gets lowered again. So many choices with servos. Super useful to know. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. And have a great day.